Hey guys, what's up? It's Olivia, long time no see. Welcome back to my channel. A lot of you guys have been asking where I've been. Um, I just finished my first year of my PhD program, so that's where I've been. <laughs> um, but there's been quite a few changes with Disney lately that I wanted to talk to you guys about. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Also comment down below what song you've been listening to lately or if you have a song stuck in your head. Nervous by Jake Miller is stuck in my head right now. I was just listening to it while I was driving. Also, if you're new to my channel, then welcome. My name's Olivia. I did the Disney College program in fall 2016 where I was an entertainment cast member and then I did the summer alumni program in 2018 where I was a merchandise cast member. So I have experience in like a couple different areas of the parks. Um, of course, I had roommates on those programs, so I heard their experiences. And I still have friends that work down there as well. I don't currently work for the company in any capacity, so anything I say is my own opinion and it is not a reflection of them. So first, I'd like to talk about the changes to the Disney look. So the Disney look is what Disney parks appearance guidelines are. So it has to do with your costume. Um, your costume needs to be, you know, ironed. Um, it needs to be, you have to be wearing it properly. So if you're supposed to wear a belt, if a shirt's supposed to be tucked in, then you need to make sure that you are following those guidelines. The Disney look also has guidelines on your appearance when it comes to your hair, your nails, any piercings, jewelry, tattoos, things like that. So Disney has made a couple of changes recently, like last week I think, and these are all in the name of inclusivity. So one thing that they added was your hair, even though it still has to be a natural color, um, before like men had to have it cut a certain length, um, or like women, I don't know if women could have it like shaved or not, but now regardless of your gender, um, gender identity, you can have your hair basically however you want. Uh, the only thing is you can't wear it like down like this. So if it would get like in my face or cover the name tag, you can't have that. So you would just have to pull it up. But even so, like I said before, it was guys had to have a certain hairstyle, certain uh, facial hair guidelines, and they have relaxed those. The next thing that they changed was nail polish. So people who are in food service still cannot wear nail polish because that's more of a safety concern. But people in other roles can now wear nail polish any color that they want. And again, regardless of gender. So before only women could wear nail polish and they had this little palette of like neutral colors that you could have now it can be any color it still has to be like not chipped um, your nails can't be long so you can't get like the fake nails or anything like that uh, you can't have any like charms or like sequins um, or decals on it but anybody could go out now and get a gel manicure of hot pink or white or black and be able to wear that into work Probably the biggest change has to do with tattoos. Cast members can now show their tattoos while they are working. Of course, there are some guidelines to this, so you can't have a tattoo showing on your face, head, or neck. Um, it also has to be, it can't be bigger than your like hand, which I don't know, because even on their promotional materials, I saw a guy's tattoo and I was like, that's bigger than a hand. Um, so I think from my understanding, if you have like a sleeve or something, you still have to cover that up. But a lot of people have like a tattoo on their ankle or on their wrist or on their arm. And before they would have to either use makeup or wear a long sleeve shirt, um, long sleeve pants, or these little like half sleeve things um, that you can actually wear under your costume. Um, now they can show them. Of course, they cannot be obscene or offensive in any way, and there are certain guidelines um, on that in the in the Disney look and in the press release. Um, but yeah, cast members can now show their tattoos. This wasn't a thing before for a couple of reasons. As we know, the Disney park started in what 1955, um, and every several decades, society's views on tattoos change. Um, my project my senior year of high school was on tattoos and it really is crazy at some points in time it was only royalty who had tattoos and then at a certain point it was mainly sailors who had them and then it became affiliated with like bikers and gang members and so it just has all of these it just changes throughout society now it feels like everybody has a tattoo um, and so Disney has modified those guidelines since you know 1955 to now accommodate for the fact that most people have tattoos. I feel like this also goes back to kind of 
a safety concern because when you have cast numbers, like if you had, you know, a tattoo on your arm and then a tattoo on your ankle, that would mean in the heat of summer you're having to wear long sleeves on everything. That's really hot. That's not good for you when you're standing outside for four hours at a time in the Florida humidity and heat, sometimes also the sun. So yeah, I know a lot of cast members are really, really happy about that. The next major change to the Disney look is they have decided to make the costumes gender inclusive. So basically, if you are a girl, you can wear the guy's version of the costume, or if you're a guy, you can wear the girl's version of the costume. Now, all the places where I've worked, the guy and girl version has been literally the exact same. The only difference is I would go to the woman's section to get my costume because the woman's, there were some where there wasn't even like a man and woman section of it. It was just like, here's the costume. Um, but sometimes the women's are like a little bit closer cut. Um, or I could find pants that were like for my height as a five foot tall woman. So again, I'll be honest, I've never worked a location where girls and guys have worn something different, um, but there are locations like the Emporium where the women are expected to wear long skirts and the guys can wear pants. And so now they can flip flop and choose what costume they want to wear. Now Disneyland is opening up very soon, sometime this month. Um, the rules are that you have to be a California resident even if you are from out of state and vaccinated, you still cannot go into Disneyland. Um, but Disneyland is finally reopening, so it's been closed for, what, a year? A little bit over a year now? And something that I really, really appreciated is Disneyland added into its rules that if you are rude to a cast member, if you yell at them, then Disney has the right to throw you out of the park. This might seem obvious. It might be like, why would someone yell at a cast member? But as someone who has been a cast member, um, this is really huge. During my summer 2018 college program, I was only there for what, like 10, 12 weeks? And there were a few things that happened that I really did not appreciate. And I felt like instead of the company backing up its cast members, it was going overboard, head over heels to try to accommodate guests who should have been thrown out of the park for life. Um, and so, that just left like a really sour taste in my mouth with the company so I was like mm, I can't work here I can only come back as a guest like I need leadership and people who are going to back me up on things and so seeing that Disneyland actually added that that gives me hope that they are going to back up their cast members they do care about the protection of them and if a guest is being bad they're just not going to tolerate it the last major change that Disney just made was adding a fifth key so when you work at Disney, there's something called the four keys, and this basically helps you decide what decision to make when you're in a situation at work. So it's safety, courtesy, show, and efficiency, and that's the order that you prioritize them as well. So if a kid is climbing up on something that he's not supposed to, um, in this case, you don't have to worry about like being efficient, like, oh, I gotta keep the ride going. Like, no, you focus on the safety. You also don't have to worry about being courteous of like, hey buddy, how about we not do that? Like you can be like, bud, I need you to get down right now. Like, you know, you can take it seriously and be serious um, because it's a safety concern, right? So in that case, we prioritize safety over courtesy, um, show, or efficiency. The common example that's always told is if you're working at a vendor cart, someone orders popcorn, you hand it to them, and they end up dropping it, then shoot, it's bad show because there's popcorn all over the place, but courtesy trumps show. So the right thing to do in that situation, first to assess, is there a safety concern? No, there's not. So you're courteous and you give the guest another thing of popcorn. Was that efficient giving someone two popcorns when they only paid for one? No, but in this case, courtesy comes above, again, show of cleaning up the popcorn or efficiency of, oh God, now the line's held up or, oh, I just gave them two things when they dropped theirs, etc. So the fifth key that they added was inclusion. Now I understand adding inclusion when it comes to Disney cast members interacting with one another, when it comes to hiring, training, people making any promotional materials or any like content, like stories, um, Imagineers, all of that. I'll be honest, I don't understand how this key comes into play when making a decision as like a boots on the ground minimum wage cast member in the park. Because it's so new, I just don't really know when there's a situation where one, a Disney cast member has not been inclusive, <laughs> um, or two, where it's like, 
oh, you really got to prioritize this over other things. Like, I just don't really understand. I can't think of a situation where that would happen, but I totally see how this is important and should be a priority and a value for the people who like have decision, like have decision making power. Um, again, when it comes to promotional materials or dealing with the cast members themselves, hiring, training, storytelling, etc. So yeah, those are the major changes that have been happening recently in the Disney parks. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video, for subscribing to my channel. Um, if you have any questions for me, pop them down in the comments below. Also, let's do a classic. If you've watched this far in the video, comment down below Disney vibes. Alrighty, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Keep dreaming out loud and I will see you guys next time. Bye.